Hello everyone, and welcome back to an old series on my channel, ranking your most unpopular Jump Stash opinions. I thought I'd bring this series back, and if you guys want more of it, let me know down in the comments. Basically, I ask you guys in a community post what your worst or most unpopular Jump Stash opinions are, and I read it some of the replies and give my thoughts on them. If you liked today's video, then please remember to like and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton, and you see more content like this. And without further ado, let's get into it. Watching the growth of the community is much, much more interesting than playing the game itself. In fact, I haven't touched the game in almost two years, but I'm still in touch with the community and the content that it is making. In some ways, I do think that this is true, but there's also times when the community can just be insufferable. For example, if you dislike a level that a lot of people like, you're gonna get a lot of hate for it. And also there's the entirety of GD Twitter, but there are also a lot of times when interacting with the community can be fun. I also do like a lot of the GD content that's being made these days. Like, you don't even need to know anything about Drama Trash to be entertained by, like, Nepesta the videos and stuff. Flow style gameplay gets too much hate. Extremely fun when creators actually do it correctly. I think this is a double-edged sword because flow gameplay is inherently a bit more learning than other types of gameplay, so people will generally just not like it unless they're willing to put the effort into learning it. I overall just think that like flow style gameplay has lower lows and higher highs. I kind of disagree because I think a lot of the hate is warranted, but I understand what you're saying. Song choice for levels is my biggest factor for enjoyment in a level. I think if Kyuki wasn't made with Crazy, or if Limbo wasn't made with Isolation, they wouldn't have been nearly as good. I think more specifically, if the song matches the level or the level's concept, it works a lot better than if it doesn't, as opposed to the song being good or bad. Like, Slaughterhouse's song matches very well with level, but I don't really listen to random screaming in my spare time. But yeah, I pretty much agree with this one, because Kyuki and Limbo both have pretty good song choice in my opinion. The robot game mode is the most underrated game mode in the game. It can be super fun to play, but barely any creators see the full potential the robot has. I think it's possible that partially why the robot and the spider don't get used as much is because a lot of the gameplay using those two game modes was made in like early 2.0 and 2.1, so like obviously it's not going to be as well developed as older game modes. But yeah, I would say the robot is probably the most underrated game mode, if not it would probably be spider. I think that even if Rob does have a creator bias, it isn't really as big of a deal as people make it out to be. There's not a limited number of levels that can be rated, so if Rob wants to just start rating something because he personally likes it, or the creator, it doesn't really hurt anyone. So this is sort of a double-edged sword. My personal beliefs on the rate system are that pretty much any level that's finished should be rated, as long as it's not like a layout or something. I overall think the rate standards are too high in this game, however feature standards are at a pretty reasonable level, because in order for something to be featured it should be sticking out. In a good way, of course. However, I do think that the discourse around Rob's creator bias is pretty warranted. It kind of makes it so that your popularity matters more than the actual quality of the level, which to some extent is always going to be present in the game just because there are so many levels out there, but at this point it's so disproportional that as long as it's not literal garbage, if it's in the top five, it's going to get rated. So I do kind of agree because more levels being rated don't necessarily hurt anyone unless it's in the top five or something, and then, well, I guess list grinders would be hurt and the game's reputation to some extent and hype around the demons list. But at the same time, there are much better levels that haven't gotten rated. And I think those should get rated too. So basically, more rates all around. People don't make simple, sight-readable demon gameplay anymore. There is a reason why old demons are the most popular. On one hand, I kind of agree because flow gameplay and other like less sight-readable gameplay has become more prevalent in the community more recently. But on the other hand, there are lots of newer demons that if you just do a practice run or two are pretty sight-readable. But this is also partially just because in the earlier stages of the game, there were less things to make the gameplay more chaotic. It was just a simpler game, so. Hell-themed demons aren't overused. The only reason it is thought to be overused is because it is used in many extreme demons. I do fully agree with this. Whenever I say Hell's themed is overused, I guess technically I am saying it's overused in extreme demons. Although what I haven't really talked about as much on the channel is I do think that Hell demons that are a lot easier, like Easy Demon, Medium Demon, are a lot more intriguing to me. Even levels just like Reanimation or Sukup and Egg are more interesting because they aren't extreme demons. So I do kind of agree, I just think it should be phrased that Hell themed levels are overused in the difficulty category of extreme demons, because they're still being overused just in a specific category, if that makes sense. Tax Evasion is a better type 1 than Cycloclick. It's easier to understand the level visually despite the extreme amount of invisible gameplay because Cycloclick has a lot of niche stuff like the multi-click trigger orbs at the beginning. Due to this, it's a better level for newcomers to the ILL. I don't really have strong opinions on Tax Evasion or Cycloclick. I just think tax evasion is funnier, so I'm on board with it being top one, I guess. Although I am aware there was some drama surrounding if the level should even be placed because apparently for a split second it bumped up to 16 CPS, which is above the ILL's 15 CPS cap. 
Overall, I do kind of hope it keeps the top one spot just because it's funnier. Difficulty jumps are good. I see people all the time saying you're not enjoying the game to its fullest if you jump from Accu to Firework, and it's also not making you any better, but Doggy jumped from Hypersonic to Killbot, and Zoink jumped from Bloodbath to Zodiac, and they got better. I also jumped from Drop Record to Windy Landscape and had lots of fun, then jumped to Accu, and yet again, it was fun. I think this is somewhat of a personal thing, although I wouldn't really say Drop Record to Windy Landscape to Accu would be really jumps. I'd say overall, it really depends on the person, because you need to be prepared if you're going to make a jump. However, I do think that it does actually improve your skill, just not as much as natural progression. It really just depends on the person and what works best for them in terms of enjoyment, and what they're really trying to go for. GD is a really addictive game, and when you escape it, you realize it's not even that fun. I'd say this can apply to trying to get better at the game, and beating things that are around like the top of your skill level. But if I just wanted to chill and play some stuff that was easier than some stuff in my top 5 hardest completions, it usually is pretty fun if you find the right levels. There's also something to be said about creating in Geometry Dash, because if you find that fun, then you still find the game fun in some way. Arcturus has a fantastic atmosphere and would have been the best top one we've ever had. The decoration isn't even bad, it fits the theme perfectly. Arcturus works infinitely better as an impossible level. The gameplay has been pretty unanimously agreed to be not that great. And I guess an argument can be made that the decoration isn't bad, but it's definitely not what I would call good. First off, it's only rated, it's not featured or epic. A lot of the stuff in it is pretty formulaic hell stuff. And while I could see a legitimate argument for why it isn't necessarily bad, I do think it's bad because most of the stuff in it is not original in any way, shape, or form. In terms of atmosphere, honestly, the theming and atmosphere is just pretty adjacent to Slaughterhouse in my opinion, in terms of it's meant to be intense and somewhat frightening in some way, you know what I mean? And Slaughterhouse does it much better. I mean, I know I don't like Arcturus, I'd give it like a 2 out of 10, but I understand why some people think that it's okay. Saying it would have been the best top one we've ever had though is just absurd. The best possible thing I could say about Arcturus is that it's a generic hell level that has a very slightly interesting atmosphere. Technical is the best Jump Trash player of all time. Honestly, the main reason for this is my nostalgia for that time period, but he was more dominant than anyone else that came before him. I remember seeing him beat Mainless Demons literally every day, and he's still a solid player to this day. I do think that in terms of comparing top players to the relative times, Technical is pretty far up there, but given that both Enswish and Zoink have beaten the entire top 75, I think there's a pretty good argument to say that both of them would have been better compared to Technical in their relative time periods. I also do think that a lot of people forget that best Jump Shush player of all time should also encompass creating, and in that respect, I think the closest that we've had to top players that are both really good at the game and really good at creating would be players like Doggy. Although even then, Technical would be pretty high up there given that he's also a content creator. So I kinda agree, but also, no. Scarlet Surge isn't bad, just doesn't have the best balancing. I kind of agree, but I also think that it's not very sight readable either. But if it doesn't have good balancing, then that would kind of make it a bad level, right? I think early 2.2 levels will still be fun. Oh boy. I actually think Arcturus's deco is good. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not even, nope, done. AOD is not that bad. The deco in the first half is really good. And even some of the part in the second half is also nice. The slow gameplay is actually really original since modern extremes are abusing 3 to 4x speed. I think in terms of having slow speed gameplay in the top 10, AOD is kind of interesting but I still do think that overall the decoration isn't very good. Although some people do call it like the worst level in GD, and I think that title probably goes to Avernus. Avernus's deco is severely underrated. Not right to say the level sucks just because Zoink buffed the hell out of it. Avernus deco is like 8 out of 10. I've like literally made a whole ass two videos on Avernus. I think the deco is really bad and really inconsistent in quality and theming, so yeah, no. And also, the host is a dick, so like, I mean, there's that too. Okay, well, that's all the opinions for today. I think all things considered, not too many of these were like absolutely horrible, but if you guys really want to see like really bad ones, maybe in the next episode I'll pick out like the most disgusting ones I can find. If you enjoyed today's video and want to see more like it, comment down below if you want to see more of this series, and please remember to like and subscribe, it helps out the channel, yada yada yada, you get it. 10k special is coming soon by the way, but yeah, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.